And then Kayla, just, I mean, when you made that Olympic team, especially the first one, and was that like, I mean, winning the gold was just, wow. But yeah. even just making the team, was yeah. that like, oh my God, this is, this is really happening. Now I'm where yeah. I'm at. I mean, I think for, you know, it's like, okay, to, to be an Olympian, to represent the greatest country in the world, you are like 0.0000001% of the population. To, to, to be an Olympian, to represent the greatest country in the world, to go to the Olympics and to win a medal. Like, okay, we're talking 0.0000000001% of the population, but to be an Olympian, to represent the greatest country in the world, to go to the Olympics, to win a gold medal, and it's the first gold medal ever won by the greatest country in the world. Like, is this just stuff you can't make up? You know, like I can't, this is like a thing, I think in my wildest dreams, I didn't, <laughs> you know, like I wanted that to happen, yeah. but I, yeah. I still can't believe my life some days. I really can't, like, it, yeah. It's the so amazing, <laughs> and, and no, it really is. And then you decide to do it again. I know. And when you decide to do it again, and then you're doing it again, does it feel as good? Does it feel as exciting? Yeah. Or is it like, or is it more pressure because you already won? I mean, I think the beautiful thing about um, my coaches, Jimmy and Big Jim, is that they <laughs> they did not treat me like I won the Olympics, you know? <laughs> which was beautiful, but also a curse at the same time because I was like, dude, I won the Olympics. Shouldn't I be like? <laughs> Come on, my what's best going on? Life? Right. You're like, killing me here in I mean, training I, and everything. No, I like went to like Uzbekistan for a tournament like a month after. You know, like we're talking like I was back on the road. I was like a, I was a Randori dog. Like I was out on those trips, like literally like, as if I had never won a tournament before. Like I was like the bottom of the barrel still. And I mean, Big Jim always, I've told that story many times where like there's two kinds of horses. There's the thoroughbred. And a thoroughbred, you can't you can't work it too much. You know, you just gotta like, you gotta uh, get keep it in good shape, keep it ready, and on race day, boom, you just let it fly. If you work it too much, he won't com he won't perform well. And then there's workhorse. Now a workhorse, listen, you you have to work that horse every day. Every day that horse has to be out plowing the field. The day you don't let it plow the field, it dies. And Big Jim's favorite thing to say about me is I'm a workhorse. And to this day, I think he might be right. <laughs> yes. Yes. I really were... want to be a thoroughbred. Oh. Well, uh... I, I just don't think I'm Can't you be forward. both, though? Can't you be I both? I mean, I argued that when you win the Olympics, you automatically, like, transcend <laughs> into thoroughbred. Like, you just automatically, you're a thoroughbred. But... He must know what he's doing because it worked. You want a second goal. That's exactly right. I was just going to come back to that. So I didn't even have time to think about pressure or is this hard or it was hard, but I was, yeah, it was like I had never won anything. So I had a lot to do. Look, I know judo wasn't basketball and it's not soccer, but yeah. still, obviously, no, it's, it's a, such a great sport. It is. But yeah. I'm just wondering during that time, after you won the first medal, were there a lot of people and groups just coming up to you and saying, hey, can you come train here? Can you come speak to us? Can you do this and do that? there were, but it wasn't for like, you know, I, I mean, I definitely had my 15 minutes of fame and I got invited to a lot of cool events and, you know, I won a lot of cool awards and had, went to cool parties and, but my phone was really ringing off the hook with, um, you know, can you come speak to, I run the Rape Crisis Center in yeah. Kansas City. Can you come be our guest speaker at our annual gala? Or I run the boys and girls of wherever and you know we wanna, we wanna educate ourselves on what child sexual abuse is. Can you come speak to our leaders? Or I run the you know, Podunk County's annual whatever, whatever, and this year... Child care center yeah, to, exactly. for abused children yeah. or, abuse or something. Yeah, and domestic violence. Yeah, all things like that. Um, just, yeah, ringing off the hook. Also because you were a... No, because you were a champion and say, hey, look, everybody, yeah. this could happen to you, yeah. and, and it's the worst thing that could happen, but you yeah. can succeed or do well from it. Yeah, I it. mean, I just think because... 
um, because I decided to put a face to it, you know, yeah. like I think we spent a lot of years thinking as a society, like, well, you know, that might happen to Catholics, but I'm not Catholic or, um, that might happen in lower income homes, but I'm not lower income or that might happen in the Boy Scouts, but my son's not in Boy Scouts. Uh, but it does happen everywhere and it does, it doesn't care how much money is in your bank account and um, predators don't care what color your skin is and predators don't care if you are a boy scout or a basketball player or a ice skater or a gymnast or a judo player, you know, like they, and they thrive in the silence. So I just kind of decided I wasn't going to be silent anymore and that everything happens for a reason and God gave me this journey and this cross to bear and um, I better pick it up and, and carry it, you know, and try and change the world for leave it, leave it better than I found it. He will put on your plate what he thinks you can handle. That's right. And that's or he'll it. equip you to handle mm -hmm. <laughs> what you that's don't think you could ever right. handle. <laughs> okay, we're going to transition now and end this with the fight, yeah. which was incredible. Oh, thank you. It was. And I know people out there everywhere is like, oh my God. Because <laughs> even if someone said like, oh, here's Kayla Harrison. Yeah. Which, for me, watching you in PFL, watching you train here at American Top Team, mm -hmm. talking to you, mm -hmm. I know, mm -hmm. I don't know you all, to, all <laughs> you the do. way. No, you but do. I know you and I know that you will fight to be successful. You will do as best as you can. Absolutely. In win, or, in win or lose, but you will do, you will go at it with that. So I knew going to UFC, there was no you know, question about that. Right. Now it's like, okay, forget that it's UFC. This is another fighter. This yeah, is who I'm course. going against. Let yeah, me go after. And Holly Holm, good fighter. Yeah, <laughs> she look at the credentials. I know. You, you dominated that <laughs> fight. I mean, honestly, and the, the thing was, it went two rounds, but here's what, and Coach Mako, Coach Mike Brown, mm -hmm. Conan, mm -hmm. they know much better than me. <laughs> I'm such a novice when it comes to that. But as a novice and as a fan watching the fight, in the beginning, it looked like it looked like she was closer to you. She mm -hmm. was closer to you, mm -hmm. and and like, what is she trying to? Is she trying to get in there and grapple? With, okay, why would she grapple with her? Yeah. Or were you doing something that, that? Um, I mean, I knew that I had expected her to. Obviously, she has some of the best footwork in the division. Right. You know, I mean, she's. I watched that fight against Ronda Rousey probably a thousand times. You know, and I, not gonna lie to you, of course, I was nervous. Like, I don't want to fall on my face and like. Look, be chasing a girl for three rounds and being made to look like a fool and getting back, you know, like spacing. Yeah, spacing. That's big, that's that was a big fear of mine. And so I knew that, um, I expected her to definitely use her footwork and I was going to have to put the pressure on, but be patient, patient pressure and Interesting. cut the cage off, you know, faint, faints. And when she got close to the warning track, go. Um, but she didn't move as much as, yeah, she didn't move as much as I expected. She definitely didn't move um, to the level that I know she's capable of. And so I don't know if it was just a bad night for her. Which, oh, whatever. Yeah, or doesn't just, matter hey, to doesn't me. matter like, what, what it was, but it, that's what yeah. I, the dynamic of the fight. Yeah. Whatever the reason, that's what I noticed. Yeah. And then you just, once you got it down, it was like, oh, this is, this yeah. is Kaylee's game here. But here's, here for me was like, elbows. Oh my God. No, it wasn't what? that. Tell me. Second round. Yeah. She's facing. She's, it didn't look like she was coming at you like yeah. she was in the first round. You took that leg kick. Oh, yeah. Whoa, <laughs> right to the side of the head. And it, it did rattle her a little. Yeah. And then you went in and that sort of... And, yeah. and I was like, oh my God, that leg kick. Yeah. Whoa. And you did a couple of leg kicks in there too. Yeah. We just had, you know, my coach Anderson is... I really do believe one of the great minds of the sport as well. And he does a lot of studying and he felt like when she's on the cage and she's trying to get away, she puts her hand down and she leans the same way every time. And so we drilled that kick over and over and over and over again. And for me, it's always every strike, right, is a setup to the takedown. Whether it's my leg hitting your head or it's my fist hitting your head, like they're all a setup for the takedown. So it may have done damage 
but I wasn't going to wait to find out, you know, <laughs> like yeah. if you're going to be holding still, I'm going to be taking you down. Wow. That was, that was just so, that whole sequence there. Yeah. I was just like, oh, Thank I hope you. I get to talk to Kayla because I really want to, I really want to ask Thank you this because it was so cool. But anyway, yeah, all right. Been so working on it. Oh my gosh. You, you said, yeah, you said a mouthful right there. <laughs> you were working on it. You bet you've been working on it. All right. So you get the win and just, is it, is it a whole bunch of things? Is it satisfaction? Is it relief? No, not relief. Is mm. it? Is it like, hey, um, see UFC. I know I belong. Now yeah. you all know I belong. I mean, is yeah. it anything? Yeah, I mean, I just no? felt. Yeah, I felt some validation. I guess, like, in the sense of, um, you know, there were a lot of doubters. There were a lot of. Um, there was a lot of. She's not going to make weight, or she, she can't beat these girls, or she's been in this bum league, B league, this, that, and the other, and so. Uh, it felt good, and I just felt like, I just feel like I'm in the right place at the right time, doing the right thing with the right people, you know? Like, that different kind of piece where it's like, yeah, no, I'm walking my path, and it doesn't matter what this person says, or this nope. person says, or that crowd thinks, or this, like, it doesn't matter what the name is, or the logo is, or who, like, I'm just, I'm doing me, and it feels really good. And I think also, again, like you said, we'll get you out of your thing. Yeah. Let's get, let's get you out of here. Not at all. Sorry. So what's next for you? And we'll wrap it up with um, that. Hopefully I have fight news soon. Um, back to training. I'm cleared and ready to go. So look out for fight news soon. Yes, Kelly Harrison, thank yeah. you. Yeah, thank you.